Hey everyone, so I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about the material that I just uploaded to Blackboard. Uh, these two slides that I created uh, go into detail about the syntax and the usage just as kind of a cheat sheet for how functions work. So you can look at the syntax explanation here of all of the different elements of the syntax. Um, and you can also look at this other cheat sheet I have that kind of puts a uh, example of mathematical functions and you know the usage that we're used to by doing functions in mathematics and it puts it against how it look how the same thing would look in programming so these are basically doing the same thing it's showing how you have one function that adds two numbers together another function that squares a number and how you can combine them to say add these two numbers together and then square the result and then I do the same thing down here in code by defining the two functions and then invoking them. So you guys can look at that on your own. Uh, you can put questions on Blackboard if you have any. I'm just going to go through the uh, fiddles that we did together in class for the people who weren't able to make the video lecture. So I'm going to cover that right now as quick as humanly possible, or at least quick as Donnelly, Donnelly possible. Donnelly, as quick as Donnie can do it. Um, so this first one is simple functions. This is what I was just talking about. So in the case of a simple function where you have f of x equals x plus 3, in English, you know, any of us that rem remember functions from mathematics will remember that this means you give me any number, and I will add 3 to that number. So this is the declaration or the definition, if you will, and these are three use cases. You can use this as many times as you want with any input value. So if the input is 5, we add 3 to it, and we get 8. If the input is 7, we add 3 to it, and we get 10. If the input is 9, we add 3 to it, and we get 12. Uh, according to the syntax that I just laid out in the previous slide, uh, and I'll, I'll just talk about it here for a second, the basic syntax of a function declaration or a method declaration um, in C Sharp is you have the return type, which means what's the type of the value. So whereas in math it's always a number, the return type is not always a number in programming. It could be a string, it could be a boolean, things like that. Uh, and the name, usually in mathematics we use like just a letter for the name of a function, but in programming we try to use a word or a group of words that says what it does. Um, so I have the return type and then I named this method, I didn't call it f, I called it add3 because that's what it's doing. It's taking the input and adding 3 to it. And the parameter is not just x, but it also specifies the type of the parameter in C sharp anyway, because C sharp is what they call a strongly typed language. So anytime you have a variable, you also have to say what type is the variable. So um, how do I say? Uh, in the future, when I say things like the parameter list is a comma delimited list of variable declarations, this that I have highlighted right here is a single variable declaration. So if I said a comma delimited list of variable declarations, it would be like int x comma int y comma int z. So just in case if I say comma delimited list of variable declarations and you're like, what the heck, what was all that? It's, that's all I mean. So in this case, we only have one. Don't have to necessarily have parameters, but we'll, we'll see that in a second. So the return type is int, that means uh, the, output is, the output is an integer. The parameter list is one int, that means the input is one integer. And the name is add3. So this is almost exactly like this. We have one input, which is a number. We have one output, which is a number. The only difference really is I changed the name to, instead of f, I called it add3. So after this, which is known as the signature. It's called the signature because it defines the name, the output uh, type, and the input types. We have what's called the body. Uh, that is in between two curly braces, and it can be as, as many lines of code as you want, but since I promised here that this is going to result in an integer, I do have to end in a return statement. That will tell us, or tell the compiler, 
hey, this is I, I'm done, you know, doing all the things I need to do. Here's the value that that I'm actually going to return, and that corresponds to this up here where it says, when I say f of x, what I'm really saying is add three to it. Similarly here, I'm saying when I say add three, and I'm telling I'm telling them I'm going to come up with an integer, I'm really saying take whatever they give me, add three to that, and return it. So these are equivalent. The actual usage is just naming the method and passing whatever real uh, values you want to use. So just some jargon for you. We call in the method declaration or in the function declaration, we call these the actual, sorry, the formal parameters. And when we call or use the method or the function, we call it the actual parameters or the actual values. These are the formal parameters because we're just declaring it and we're not uh, really using it yet. We don't have any actual use cases, so it's just like a formality. It's something to refer to it by. And then in the usage, we have actual values. So the formal term for this, for calling a method, calling a function, using it, we say invoke. I know it's a kind of a magical word, but we say we're invoking the function or invoking the method. So this invocation here that I've highlighted, add three to five, is is one value. It's the value of eight, because five plus three is eight. So you'll notice here that I have these three right lines, and I'm just writing three values to the screen. This is five plus three, this is seven plus three, and this is nine plus three, according to my function definition. And you can see that it printed out the values accordingly. So five plus three, seven plus three, nine plus three, and those are the three values. Example of a slightly more complicated function with two parameters instead of one. And like I said, this is a comma delimited list. Instead of one parameter, I have two with a comma separating them. And now I have returned x plus y. So I would say to myself in my you know, logical brain, oh, this is adding two numbers together. Therefore, I decided to name the, the method or the function adder. And when I actually invoke it, I just say adder and I pass whatever inputs I want and this resolves to the the value that the function is defined to perform. So in this case, as in mathematics, it says you give me two integers and I'll give you back the sum. It's the same thing here. So this would be 5, this would be 12, and this would be 20. So that's the basics. Uh, that's about as similar as you can get to just the mathematical uh, analogy from math functions to programmatic methods. Uh, there's really no difference. So, you know, a function of x is to add 3 to it. A function of two numbers is to add them together. Uh, it doesn't really get any easier than that. So there's two more short, I think, shorter examples here. So one of the differences in programming is that you can have void functions. And a void function, technically speaking, is not really a function. It's really a method. A function, the word function implies that it returns a value. That's why I kept saying function or method. Technically speaking, these are all methods. Uh, if it has a return value that's not void, you can call it a function. But if you want to be all academic about it, if it doesn't return a value, it's not, a, it's not really properly called a function. So. Some languages make a distinction, like in Visual Basic, there's different words that you have to use. If you want to return a value, you say function, and if you don't return a value, you have to say subroutine. But in C-sharp, it's all the same. It's it just, you know, it, you never say method or function. You just look and see if it has a return value or not. So void just means it doesn't return anything. Well, the question would be, what's the point of it then? So if I have a method called print hello world, well, there's no inputs and there's no outputs. So what's the, what's the point? Well, the point is uh, is that you get oops is that you get code reuse out of it. So what does that mean, code reuse? Well, just to show you the mechanics of it, any any code that I put in the body of the method will get executed if I. <clears throat> 
happy now? There you go. Will get executed if I just invoke the method. So I'm not using the value because there is it's not a value, it's a void method. And I'm not passing anything to it because it has no parameters. But since I'm calling it, it will execute the code inside of that method. So the code reuse aspect is not apparent from this first example, but you can see that it is executing the code inside of the method when I invoke it, even if it has nothing to do with returning a value or passing parameters. So the next example, um, oh, I must have totally gotten rid of it. Ask user for name and print it. Okay, let's call that and see what it does. It says, what is your name? I'm gonna type in Donnie and we wait patiently. And it says, hello, comma, Donnie, period. So this is an example of actually code reuse in a little more obvious way. So I have three lines of code here. The first one says, print what is your name? And then it says, read a string from the user. And then it says, take whatever the user typed in as their name and concatenate it inside of a hello comma and a period. So let's say I wanted to do that a few times in my program. I, I wouldn't want to write those same three lines of code over and over and over again. And you should know that by now, actually, because in the first assignment uh, or the second assignment, we were basically saying like, hey, you know, I want, you know, I want to know this. And they would type something in and then we would use it somehow and we would have a lot of repetitive code that would kind of look like these three lines where we would have a write line, a read line, a write line, a read line. And now that you have like this tool to be able to just stuff all that inside of a method and call it, you can make it so that you only have to write this once and never have to write it again. And if you want this code to execute again, you simply call the method again. So if I did this, you know, three times and ran it, It would happen three times. What is your name? Donnie. Hello. What is your name? My brother. My sister. So it printed out the formatted string three times, and I only had to write the code once. So that's a better demonstration of code reuse. And then we have this last example. So this is an example of a void function, a void method, I should say. It's not really a function because it doesn't return a value. A void method with a parameter. So this is a little more useful because we can parameterize it and do different things every time we call it instead of just calling it over and over again. So this says take whatever parameter or parameters, in, in this case just one parameter, that come in through the method invocation, and we have access to them in the body. So this, uh, the body says, what does the method do? The method will write line, three stars, a space, whatever the parameter was, and three stars. So remember, it's using the value of the parameter in the method body, that's the important part. So I expect that both of these lines of text, or any text that I pass, any string that I pass to this method is going to get printed out wrapped in stars. So print something starry like that. So this is a non-void function with no parameter. So non-void means it is giving us back a value, uh, but in this case we have no parameters. So well, what would be an example of we want a value, but we're not giving it an input. Like intuition tells us that if we just say, hey, give me this value, but we don't specify any parameters, it should always be the same value. Like, um, hey, tell me, you know, how, how high is the Statue of Liberty or something like that, right? I'm not giving it any parameters. Like, you know, what are you going to do for five? What are you going to do for seven? What are you going to do for nine? I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, do this and give me back the value. So in the context of declarative functions, uh, an example might be, you know what? I wanna know what time it is right now, 
that's a value that I don't know. And I also want you to reuse some formatting that I've um, devised and pre-planned. So this is a combination of obtaining an unknown value that the language can give us and also uh, doing a little bit of formatting. And it's actually, lo and behold, the, the same formatting that I was talking about before. I cheated a little bit because I didn't uh, you know, make it you know, perfect. Like I was saying before, I, I, I think I had this method before that would, no matter how many lines it was, and no matter how wide it was, it would always make it a perfect box around everything. Uh, I'm not doing that here, but I am writing a little bit of code to beautify it a little bit. So when I call get current time formatted, which is what I do right here, if I just put some spaces there, maybe it'll add a little bit of emphasis that this is just a value. That's just a string. And the reason that there's three lines is just because of these backslash, backslash n's in the middle of the string. So a backslash n is just a code for a carriage return. So when I invoke the function, what does it do? It declares a string and it says, I. this is actually a .NET method to return whatever the current date is. So Tuesday, September 22, 2020. And the next thing I do is I declare another string called borderline. So at this point I have two strings that are localized to this method, which means they, they don't exist anywhere outside of, uh, when, I, when I call this method, when I invoke this method, these will exist while the return value of the method is being built up and computed. But after the method invocation is over, these won't exist anywhere. So I have these sitting there waiting to be used. I have the time and I have the borderline, which are both strings. And now, as you can see on the next line, I'm going to return the formatted time. So what I'm doing now on line five is I am preparing the final return value, which is a borderline followed by a carriage return, followed by a space and a bar and a space, followed by uh, the time with some padding on the right, followed by another uh, bar and then a carriage return another borderline. So I get this whole beautiful string here when I print it out as get current time formatted. So I know this lecture was not perfect. Uh, it was literally I just sat down extemporaneously started talking. So uh, uh, I will definitely respond to feedback so that when I make my more refined and final version next time it'll be uh, a little more planned out, a little more uh, focused on the things that the students have indicated made sense and doing a better job where they said it didn't or I went too fast or something like that. Uh, either way, like I said, pre uh, feedback is appreciated and uh, we'll keep talking about this for at least the rest of the week and maybe longer. All right, thanks. See ya.